Hey, welcome in everybody to this edition of Jetpacks to the Bank. As we are finally celebrating a Phillies win, as Alec Bohm also hit his first major league bomb, Splash Town 101, into the uh, center field pool or pond, whatever that is out there. So uh, that was huge. So, I mean, we love to see that from him. But, Andrew, how are you doing tonight after we finally, first time in a week, worth the games, got a win? <laughs> I was much needed. It, it cheered me up a little bit. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest way, but it, it wins a win, uh, saves a save, and we needed that to pick us up from earlier today. Yeah, and guys work odd because, like we say, Hembry obviously didn't get a good save there, but some guys work, work. off of, no matter how – Workman, I mean, didn't get a great save there. Uh, but some guys work off of just if you get it, somehow it gets you going. It doesn't matter how. It's like, oh, all of a sudden I had that on my stat line – and I got it going, but we'll get into his his whole ninth inning later because I don't know if I agreed with the whole first pitch curveball. But we'll get we'll get into that uh, later as we get more to the end of the game. But um, I did like again at the beginning of his outing, like they were kind of talking about Vasquezian was kind of hinting at it, what we saw from Eflin, but then he started teetering again towards the end of his outing. So I don't know what you thought of him because he looked, again, pretty good at the start, but then, like, he isn't able to, and he's normally a guy that eats innings for you, eat the innings like he normally does coming back from this injury. It seems like he kind of loses steam. I don't know if you get that same feeling. Uh, Not today. He had one bad inning uh, in the third. He looked good in the first two, and then he bounced back and threw two two and a third scoreless after that. So to me, it was just one bad inning, ran into a couple – couple doubles he, uh, Swanson had his number today with three doubles on the day uh, followed by a Freeman double so he just to me he just ran into one bad sweet sequence in that inning and then obviously ran into a little bit of trouble before getting pulled when uh, Hembre came in and, and shut the door down for his day I uh, picked up the win I thought this was one of his better outings on the year um, I actually thought Eflin had a had a good improvement on, on compared to other other games he's had this year uh, and that's why I picked up his first victory today yeah, I didn't uh, think he pitched bad. My thing was more uh, like he gave up. They would like to have seen him get through that six than he was at oh. high 80 pitch count, I think. Uh, well, yeah, of and course you want to see him get through the six. So I'm saying, like, normally Eflin was a guy that got us through five and two-thirds of six. Like, he was one of our guys that normally pitched our high, higher average innings per store because he was always an innings eater. That's why I'm saying. He hasn't been doing that yet. He looked good today, but he's still normally, I think, if Eflin was feeling completely loose and going, well, one, he might not have had that one off inning, but two, uh, he probably would have been able to get through the six. I think he's looked his best today, which is a good sign. I still don't think he's looked like his normal self yet, but that's a good sign for being able to pitch this well against a Braves lineup not looking like your normal self. And then Heath Hembray, as you said, uh, we'll go to him uh, on what you think about him before we go to uh, any of the hitters and then end with the next two pitchers. Uh, he came in and just shut down the door, got out of a jam. I saw somebody posted in the one group chat I'm in where it was a meme where someone's like the Phillies pitcher actually getting out of a jam and there's someone like lifting up their glasses and it was like, <laughs> like them blinking, like looking. Um, so what did you think of Hembry coming and giving us one and two third looking great? Deuces Rogers said he should anoint him the closer already and just start giving him three inning saves like back in the old days after seeing those one and two thirds. But that was obviously a joke. But what do you think of him as a whole? I was I was impressed. I thought he had some good movement on his pitches. Uh good good first impression here for Philly fans. Not that he had much to live up to uh through this year so far. Uh, but good, good, solid first outing. A uh, guy that's looked pretty good this this year outside of a game or two. Uh, ZRA is still kind of high, but but we'll see if he can get that down. Uh, but no, very very impressed here. Very good showing. Way to get your uh, name in a good spot there with your new manager, and obviously, hopefully, trust him down the road in the future. Uh, but couldn't ask for much more more from him today. Uh, two strikeouts in an inning and two thirds, and again. Uh, big spot there with with runners on when he came in and got out of the jam. So uh, tr- tremendous job. And finally, 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 you, you get some uh, help from that bullpen. And, and we mentioned before, if they can continue to do this, they'll start winning games and, and get be a, a truly dangerous team. Yeah, that's kind of what they were hinting at, it seemed like, on the ESPN uh, telecast a bit because they were talking about how 
like the Nationals got bullpen help later in the season. Like teams always know they can get bullpen help during a season. Like they were talking about all that, like that's the Phillies Achilles heel if that gets fixed. Then basically what you said, it'll balance things out. Um, I did uh, really like, though, uh, moving on from the bullpen lineup wise, what we saw from our leadoff hitter again in Andrew McCutcheon. Um, He he um, got an RBI, obviously, on that one hit that, again, Dansby Swanson probably could have caught, but he didn't. So uh, he got a nice hard hit line drive there. Uh, He had two hits on the night again and scored a run in five at bats now moving his average up to 238 from the low average it started as so he's been hitting really well recently and 631 ops so uh what do you think of kutch continuing to uh keep his hot hand going yeah i think the lineup i'll just talk about the lineup as a whole too uh but mccutcheon looked fantastic he really has turned the corner his average is up to 238 still not obviously great but but respectable at this point for where he from where he started uh on the year Uh, he's now two for five uh, he was two for five today, had an RBI and a run scored. But same thing with the guy hitting behind him, Hoskins. Another two hits today. He's up to 224 at two RBIs, hit another home run. Uh, another tremendous sign. I think uh, great job to see him come around and really th- think he's turned the corner as well. I, and here, here's my biggest takeaway from today. And you can say what you want about the bullpen. Obviously, looked. I guess you can say better. They still gave up a run uh, and got lucky at the end. But I think one of my biggest takeaways from today is this lineup. You were still able to manufacture five runs, uh, which was a very solid number, with Harper and JT both struggling. They both had bad days. I know JT got the bloop single at the end of the game, but let's be real. He struggled today. Uh, So I think that was one of the biggest signs I saw today is two guys you've relied on day in and day out this season so far both had a really bad game at the plate. They combined for five strikeouts and ten at-bats. So they struck out combined 50% today. Uh, and you were still able to manufacture five runs. Not only just manufacture five runs, but you were still on a way to win the game. That's a big sign for me. That's a confidence builder overall for me. And, uh, again, if the pitching holds through, you're going to have a dangerous team. And that shows you how deep this lineup is. And along with the McCutcheon and Hoskins getting hot, that was really, really good to see for me and build confidence. And, obviously, you got to give credit to Alec Bohm. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, first career home run. He goes three for three today. A uh, tremendous spot here already, building his average up to 344. So it's just today was a really good it's sign. It's Sunday uh, night. Yeah, right. Uh, good thing we got, what, two weeks, I think they said, before the next one? Um, I thought we're I th- next week. The I next week? Next week's uh, against the Braves. Yeah, that's what Freddie said on the hot mic. Okay. <laughs> when he was um, like, dumb. But, yeah, I, I just think that's a really good sign today from the offense. And, unfortunately, I think Harper Street came to an end. I think before today – I think it was before today, unless he pitched it Friday, I can't remember. But uh, it was today's the first game he has, did not reach base in the 2020 season. I believe I read somewhere. Yeah, um, I think so. That shame, was to, today. shame to see that streak end. Very solid streak to start the year. This was game 24, so 23 game on base streak this year. Who knows what dating back to last year it would have been? I don't remember obviously how he finished. Uh, yeah. Last season, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this no. morning. But that. to go with uh, Reese, he is hitting 261 last seven games with four RBIs and two homers. So he actually has two homers mixed in there. Kutch is hitting 313 last seven game and has been uh, really putting some good swings on the ball, getting a lot of hard contact and has seven RBIs. And obviously that one home run that he didn't even think he hit uh, in this series that ended up going out by a pretty solid margin on a hard line drive to left field. But uh, he's been sharpening up. Hoskins has been sharpening up, like we said. Didi, yes, sir, as he hit the home run, like the Phillies Twitter account said, uh, has been continuing to do well. He gets seems to get at least a hit per game. So Real, real quick on him, his post-game tweets are hilarious. I love how after every one he tweets something out. I, I just got to give him a shout-out on that. Because every time, you don't even know what they mean all the time because you throw that random emojis on them, too. So it's just funny. I just had to throw that in. No, he is funny. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, Andrew Knapp continues to get a hit per most of the games he's in. He didn't get a hit in one game he was in so far, but he kicked up one single tonight. Um, In the game he was in and called a pretty good game again, other than that curveball uh, at the end of the game. But we'll get to that later. Um, His most important (laughs) thing was what he did the final play of the game. That's the most important thing he did today. Well, first of all, yeah, he made up for calling that curveball anyway because he blocked the plate and got drilled and I don't, know, I don't know how he held on to that ball. Uh, so, 
Yeah, so that made up for that anyway. So I didn't get mad at uh, Nat more so. I just wanted to point out I didn't love because I think Freeman, since Workman was throwing a lot of uh, breaking balls, like whether they said he had bat the head to Varia, he mixed in the one fastball. Then he lined it off of that dog cutout down the line um, where after that, they're like, oh, he's not going to get any more fastballs. He was throwing a lot of breaking balls like sliders or in curveballs to keep the hitters off balance. I think Freeman was kind of sitting off speed. So, because you could tell from how he hit, like he was jumping to that curveball. Um, I didn't love the whole pitch call, but obviously our relay defense showed out tonight and had a great throw to home plate, a great uh, catch and block by Andrew Knapp. So it kind of negated the whole pitch call anyway, because like you said, Knapp made a top-notch play there. So Hey, I know know you like to rip on Quinn's defense so far this year, but if anybody else is in center field there, that's a tie game. If anybody else is in center field, that's a tie game. Yeah, most likely, unless if maybe – well, Hazley's a lefty, so it would have been hard for him to throw it in from that angle. Uh, he's not, Hayes is not fast enough to get to that ball either. But uh, I think um, that's why I like Quinn in center. I don't because he sucks at fielding. Like, that was a good play to get to it. He's not good at tracking balls. Like, you can get to a ball in front of you when it lands. I mean, that's not the most complicated thing to do. Yeah, right, we'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah, he's had a couple bad games. That's, that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah, well, his tracking's just not good. It's like when Kingery first started playing the outfield. Like, he would get to it, but you would see him going back, and you'd be like, and he's going back, 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 back. And he makes the catch because because uh, of his tracking. Otherwise, he would probably be there, and Tom McCarthy wouldn't be saying it like a stressful human being as he's <laughs> trying to go back to make the catch. But, I mean, Quinn's going to also go as far as his bat goes where – um I mean, he keeps getting a hit per game ish. He'll stay in. If he starts not doing that, I think Hazley will eventually start playing because eventually you got to give him time against lefties. And I think uh, that'll happen at some point. I don't know why uh, we're not doing it already when it seems like, from how you hear from the organization and then Girardi before this year, they think he has a chance to be their center fielder. So it seems stupid, in my opinion, but it is what it is. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people got carried away with Hazley's uh, hot start. Like, he, he's cooled off now. He's not the guy he was in the beginning of the year. He, he hasn't got a hit in his last seven games. He, he's he's uh, 0 for 10 in his yeah, last but streaked, 10 at but best. also when he came so, back up last year, got cold, then closed the season when we called him back up, and then closed the season in 314 or something like that. So, like, he, he's a young guy that's going to be streaky. I still think he's better than Roman Quinn. I, I, I can't sit here and say he's better than Roma Quinn. I, I mean, it's clear they don't want him hitting against lefties, but I just think when it's all said and done, it's going to eventually even and out. I don't, and you're, like seeing, it start, Quinn, you're, see, you're seeing it start to even out. Like I don't think it will because I think Hazley's a more talented overall player. He hits to all fields. Uh, he's a guy that I think will hit above 270 his whole career. I don't think Quinn will ever do that. Quinn's a 265 hitter at most because he doesn't stay on the field enough. He doesn't stay consistent enough. Um, and he's not really that good at hitting right hand. That's why I'm surprised we hit him a lot. He has that one home run, and he's hit. He's but he's more of a left-handed hitter as a switch hitter. He nah, he's more of a right-handed hitter. That's why. That's why he strictly was well, right-handed. Then that's he what, probably was should... it. Did he uh, for a little bit last year go strictly right-handed? Oh, you're right. Well, then I I don't know why. Well, I think he looks better lefty because that's when he hit the home runs <laughs> off the second deck. Like, I don't think he's better with his hand, his better handness then because he doesn't hit good pitches with his better hand. Uh, uh, usually we'll, it's curveball. We'll see, we'll see right how hand. it plays out. Um, but, I mean, I just think Hazley's a better overall player. He's a better – he gets to the ball. He's better at tracking the ball. He's a better fielder. He's going to hit better in his whole career. I guarantee you Hazley will be on this team in three years. I guarantee you Roman Quinn will not. I don't know about that. We'll, we'll see. I, I can't guarantee he's going to be here in three years. Well, I do. So. He hasn't proven anything yet. He will continue. He's a second-year player. Roman Quinn hasn't proven squat in seven years. Uh, neither one. That's what I'm saying. Neither one of them have proven anything. Like, yeah, but it's expected of a second-year player. I'm just – all I'm saying is you're not sold on these two. I'm not sold on either one of these guys as an everyday starter. If you can – well, we'll see if they eventually maybe – Get like I could see them replacing one of them if you find a better center fielder in free agency. Is all I'm saying. 
Yeah, it also depends how they go, because like I said, they're both streaky players. If Quinn gets going, then yeah, he'll stay in. But if Hazley does what he did at the end of last year to round out the year in the last 15 games, like I say, he hit like over 300. So <laughs> you're going to keep getting staying with a hot hand there. I think he'll get going. He also um, was being bothered, they said, before he came out by that wrist, and then he came out as it didn't get – like it was kind of like Bruce. Uh, he had a nagging – thing and then eventually they're like let's put you on the il um so i would think that has a little bit of an effect just like it probably had on bruce as his average was going down and he wasn't hitting as consistently before he went on the il uh other than for power but that that i mean oblique would obviously have an effect on that so um i think that weighed into those two guys a bit but either way it'll be interesting to see i think this team might not be done though from some of the um, trade buzz articles I still read in terms of getting relievers from some stuff I read because lefty would be good to get here and there's a couple lefties you could get or I would still take Trevor Rosenthal because you can never have enough good guys at the back end of your bullpen I agree with that and we'll see what happens and I think we got like eight days till the deadline so we'll, we'll, we'll break it down yeah but once we it's get coming closer. up it's coming up uh, real real quick this year yeah <laughs> um but I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about, I mean, Tommy Hunter, other than that, and Hunter and uh, Workman, we had Hunter step up today and get two strikeouts. Looked pretty good. He had that one nasty, I guess it's a slider that he throws. Was that a slurve? I mean, it looked like a slider slurve. Either way, it was a nasty pitch on the outside corner that uh, struck him out. And uh, he did very well bouncing back today. Uh, Workman, again, his curveball was off. Uh, his slider looked better today than his curveball in some pitches other than to that one batter there, um, where I think that's why I wouldn't have threw it to Freeman because it seemed like he was sitting there. But again, uh, Nap, they made up for it and they got the out, so it didn't matter. I still think uh, I saw – what I saw from Workman was more a guy that pitched – what he pitched, like 30-some pitches yesterday, I think? Like yeah, that's why that's why I would never use him today. I, I think that was a mistake in itself. Yeah. Girardi got bailed out, and so did Workman. Uh, he he has impressed me uh, too much in these first two games. Um, I would have went I would have went the Hale in the eighth, and then uh, Hunter in the ninth. If I if I'm being honest, um, after Nair's struggles yesterday, Workman struggled yesterday and threw about thirty pitches. So I would I would get I would have had him have the day off today. Yeah. But luckily, I think it was just Girardi luckily, showing confidence in his new guy because he wanted the ball. Which is not a bad thing, but I will say, I mean, we got we got bailed out today after off a fantastic play, great momentum win. Uh, Quinn Quinn uh, Quinn Gregorius and Nap really helped the team dodge a bullet tonight because yeah, you, know, you were looking at two blown saves from Workman in two days. Yeah, I don't know how Nap. I mean, you brought it up earlier. I don't know how most uh, people would probably lose that ball because he basically slid into him Man. where when he caught it. So I don't know how that worked out for him, but. That was a great play, and we know Knapp's a big-time fielder uh, back there. That's why you kept him around for this long, and now he finally started hitting, so he showed that uh, off right there. And that was not even close to being one of those stupid rules with the plate. That was, like, stupid that that took so long to review that. Um, But uh, anyway, they ruled in our favor, but that would have been, like Matt Gelb said, they should just – I forget exactly what he said, but he's like, they should just stop the sport or something like that. If that was a, if that was a, uh, if that was a um, call, because that would have been a joke. That that, but uh, it wasn't, and obviously, that was big. I mean, oh, here it is. That's a hell of a play by Andrew Knapp to catch and hang on. If they overturn that, disband the sport. <laughs> so like that was a great play by Knapp. That's my uh other than the fact that we saw a pretty solid pitching performance again. Our starting rotation continues to look good. If we can get good pitching from the pen minus what we saw in the ninth today, like we got today, we can keep building on that. So what I said on Knapp and that is really my final thoughts on the pitching. Uh what would be uh your final thought? Uh, good momentum building win. Um, hopefully a day off really helps this team. They look tired, very tired. Uh, and it's only going to continue to get tougher. So bullpen needs a day off. Offense needs a day off. Hopefully they use it wisely and uh, go out and get two against Washington because uh, you need to start putting all out some wins here. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I mean, I think the Phillies 
uh, when we play Washington. We got to start putting out some wins, and you got to uh, check out um, that video. We'll probably be doing a video tomorrow previewing the national series. But please like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you want to talk about in some future Phillies videos if you want anything special for us to talk about. Did you have anything else to say? Mm, oh, good. no, you raised your pen. So no, I, I just pointed you. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, subscribe, gotcha. Subscribe, definitely. Uh, like the channel, and uh, just help us out there. Yeah, uh, so have a great and pleasant day, everybody. For Andrew, who you can find at AJ underscore Santangelo, and on SteelFlyers.com. Check it out. Great website that has all our links on it. You can find the podcast at True underscore Philly Sport. On Twitter and me at JJ Boric, B O R E K, not like John Boric, who's a great analyst that you should still follow, even though he's not around here on Twitter. But uh, so JJ Boric 26, this has been Jetpacks to the Bank as we finally got a win and on a perfect defensive play. Isn't that beautiful to see in our in our Philadelphia Phillies? Uh, maybe Heath Hembray planned it. He's like, I want Philly to see a perfect <laughs> defensive play. So let me just throw this meatball curveball over the plate so we can have a perfect. No, but either way, that's just beautiful to see because some people questioned our overall defense. And I remember in past years with Gabe, it was like, oh, my God, we can never get the ball in from the outfield. We can like remember how we would always uh, that's my now new closing thought. Beautiful to see that be an ending way of a game when that's been a question mark the last couple of years. But this has been Jetpacks for the Bank. For Andrew, I am Joe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Peace out, and go Phillies. Keep ringing that bell.